Don't worry, I'm not on fire, okay? A gentleman from the Navy sent me a bit of a resting cable, which is the stuff that catches jets when they land on an aircraft carrier, and some bearings. He wants a kitchen knife forged from the stuff, and I'm the guy to do it. He also wants a small hunting knife made from any extra bearing material if possible. Now, let us speak of these bearings. When I hear bearing, I think of 52100 or something similar that has some chromium in it, making it very difficult to forge weld. So incorporating this into a cable knife seems a bit sketchy for me. And they are super small, so if we're gonna use them for anything at all, they have to be forge welded together. So I'm gonna try to stick these together and see what happens. I mean, the first round goes okay, but my second attempt goes off the tracks. This heat was a little bit hotter, but nothing was sparking, and yet it all mushed out like it was overheated. I forged the third pair together, then welded that to our first billet, and things look okay, but late in the game, the knife starts to fall apart. So it wasn't meant to be with the bearing steel. Let's just get back to our resting cable. I'm going to try this in two ways. Method one, I'm just going to hammer it out with a lot of flux on the anvil. And method two, I want to try and put in a canister to see what happens. Now for method two, for a canister, we're going to have to really soak the cable and try to get all the grease out of the middle. The guy who sent it did make some efforts in that direction, but I suspect it's still going to have to be cleaned further. With grease in the middle, you know, it has nowhere to go in a canister. We can't use flux in a canister, and I don't want flammable stuff in a sealed container because that's a bomb. So here we go, let's bang it around on an anvil. First, I'm gonna take it out of the forge when it's not quite ready and put some flux on it. That flux is borax and it liquefies when it hits the hot metal and just sort of runs all over the surfaces and helps clear out junk and oxides when we do our forge welding. It's good stuff. I'm gonna put this in a vise and try to tighten it, but first I wanna set some welds, especially at the ends, so it doesn't pull apart when I do that. Feels like it's starting to get solid under the press, which is good news. Now watch this. If you look carefully at the tip of the bill, you'll notice that flames are coming out. To me, that says there actually is some sort of residual grease or coating on the inside of the cable. not thrilled. Most of the patterns on the outside, like I'm gonna be grinding that away so I can weld these together, so. Sheesh. Hey guys, thanks to Starbond, the sponsor of this video. There's a reason you're seeing Starbond around so much right now and so many knife makers use it. I'm gonna tell you why. First, it comes in five viscosities. So from thin all the way up to thick, everything in between. And in addition to clear, it comes in black, brown, and white tints. So there's a glue for every application. You can get an accelerator for it, speeds drying times 10. This is guaranteed fresh from the factory when you order it from their website, produced within the last month, has a three year shelf life. I guarantee you're not getting fresh product when you order it from Amazon or big box stores. Um, your glues and resins and epoxies need to be ordered from the manufacturer when possible, and Starbone offers that. Um, my favorite thing about Starbond is the packaging. This came in this package with two lids. How often are we throwing stuff out because the lid is clogged? Uh, legit all the time. And six applicator tips. Six applicator tips. I don't know of another product that offers applicator tips like that. So um, it's pretty amazing stuff. Again, I think there's a reason you see it around. Check the affiliate link below. It helps the channel again. And thanks to Starbond. Okay, so the problem I was alluding to is that the outside of a cable Damascus billet is not very often solidly welded and perfectly flat, so you have to grind it away to get to the solid steel beneath, and that in this case, it looks like that grinding will remove a significant portion of the patterning steel. There just wasn't a lot of activity in the center 
of our thin cable billet here. So I'm striking a middle ground and grinding off some, but not in all of the outside. And then in an act of sheer voodoo desperation, I'm putting some powdered steel in the remaining crevices before arc welding circumferentially to make the billet um, airtight. And, and we're gonna forge weld it after that and close up those gaps, I hope. By the way, you can't forge any cable. It has to be bright or uncoated steel. No coatings, no galvanization, nothing like that. And even then, it may not weld up very well depending on the steels inside. And even then, that steel may not make a good knife edge. That's why we're gonna put 52100 on the edge of ours. In the meantime, we've cut our billet. We're gonna stack it again and try to close up some more of these gaps. As you can see, there's not much of a pattern there because it's so tight and we're gonna make it tighter. We're really gonna to have to draw this out to see much. This is a piece I forgot to forge weld into this billet, so I'm just going to stick it here. I've welded everything, these three pieces together. I'm going to put the 15 and 20 on the bottom and turn it up on end. Whoa! So even though I took this cable out of the acetone a good while before this shot, there was still some acetone in the middle that hadn't evaporated, I guess. I didn't plan that, but it does look pretty cool. Oh, hey guys, I was afraid of this. Um, when I was grinding, the ed, the tip started to turn. And sometimes that happens, even though you temper a blade, when, especially canister, and you have some weird materials in here, like this cable, it's all knotted up anyway. You can't, I mean, I can normalize and I can heat treat the 15 and 20 edge, but I don't know how to do any of that with this cable. I don't even know what it's made of. But two different steels, and it was straight out of the temper, but as I was grinding, the edge started to turn the tip turned and so to, to grind it straight I had to reduce it I had to grind down and then regrind it you know because when you grind down you get more width to play with and so even though I got it straight I paid a price 
our cutting material stops right about there maybe there so this isn't very good quality hardened steel up here on the tip so I'm gonna have to sort of cut it off right about there and uh, make this a little Japanese style knife which is fine it's just too bad that is a huge bummer I went ahead and milled a slot in this piece of mango wood and I'm filing it to fit our tang it's gonna split this man I've never worked with mango before and it's pretty splitty stuff At any rate I'm gonna use maple and it's gonna pair well with our uh, piece of ironwood that's going underneath it we're drilling our tang slot in the ironwood then we're gonna broach it out with a broach saw I don't do a lot of faceted handles. I think this is my second attempt, maybe my third attempt. I don't remember. I don't have a vise that rotates, you know, um, on the Y axis or horizontally. It doesn't rotate. So it's really hard for me to get stuff flat to sand it. And it makes doing facets a bit difficult. So I, I think if I'm going to do a lot of facets, I need a, a vise that turns in that dimension or whatever. Sharpening on my TS Prof K03 is an absolutely stunning machine. Very expensive, but the quality is extreme. And it's better than its higher priced competitor, the Wicked Edge system, in my opinion. So if you're interested, I did a review video on these, and I have an affiliate link in the description below for purchase. It helps me out, and I thank you for considering that. This ad paper was folded and in our trash, so it's a little bit damp. You'll have to forgive the tears. It really is a sharp knife. There aren't any significant gaps in the billet that I could find, but our efforts to close everything up really took a toll on any cable-like features in the pattern, so to speak. Everything is just so tight. I still like it, and the ironwood, man, it's just so pretty. Next time, we're going to do the canister cable project, so keep your eyes peeled for that video. It should be coming soon.